Hi everyone, I'm Dave. I'm Rob. Welcome to our Chipola fifth quarter podcast. We are so excited to be filming from the main campus here in Mar Mariana for Chipola College. What a great time to be at Chipola. We just were just received our ranking for fifth in the country for quality and affordability for a business management program. Yep. So it's exciting. It takes a team. We've been working hard, so that, that was uh, well received. Our podcast today is exciting, looking at uh, topics related to the, the gridiron, to the game that we love, you know, football, looking at the pro and the college game, even some high school local standouts, and comparing that to the classroom, looking for leadership management concepts, teamwork, these important nuggets that help us both in the classroom and outside, really, and just in the game of life. So, uh, Rob, what do you got for us today to kind of kick us off in the podcast? Are you, are you sure we're in the right place? I mean, we took a week off. Hadn't had a chance to talk college football, so I figured we'd get back into it. The week one matchups, uh, there's four specifically that I want to talk about. Uh, the first one, Alabama versus Miami, uh, is the one that everybody in the nation is going to be watching. Um, it's I think, already solid, right? It's in concrete? Right. It's happening? Yeah, yeah. These, these are wow. happening. These, these, are, these are the top four week one football games that ESPN, CBS, other – networks are going to be paying attention to so that you can't talk right i mean this is the game if they show up and deliver it's over i, I mean do you want to give an opinion too early do we really want to say out of <laughs> alabama versus miami who's going to win wow are we talking the 80s or like 2021 <laughs> well i wish we, if we were talking about the 80s i would definitely say miami but you know we're a long way from the 80s uh alabama versus miami man the, the first one on the list i think this one's going to set the standard uh, for Alabama, and it's going to be an even bigger challenge for Miami. Miami's looking at De'Eric King, their quarterback. They're expecting him to be ready to go week one. Uh, they're expecting him to be healthy. Uh, they made some improvements to their offense. Uh, defensively, it's my understanding Miami's got a guy, Avante Williams II, uh, at free safety. He's one of the safety positions, free or strong, I can't remember. He's supposed to be a solid player for them defensively. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some, some moments where their defense will step up and make some plays, but overall uh, it's going to be real difficult uh, to get past Saban's tide. So the Hurricanes, I think they're going to be ready to play. If by some long shot they could actually pull it off, wow, that would kind of put college football on its head. Though Alabama could still run the table and still win the SEC and be, you know, in the top four. Um, I think the Hurricanes will show up ready to play. And I, you would think on paper, just looking at the last couple of years, someone could say it could be a blowout. And I would argue against that. I think the Canes will show up ready to play, and maybe they'll lose by three touchdowns. Well, you don't want to speak out of turn. I mean, the, the Canes, I'll pick you back off of that. You don't want to make a prediction too early that says, oh, Alabama's just going to win it all, because uh, every year after they won their second one, I want to say it was in 2012, uh, they started thinking, okay, it's just going to be Alabama, Alabama every year. And then you had the FSUs uh, when they threw the hiccup. You know, 2013, FSU comes in and wins it. Uh, then you had an Ohio State year that come in and finished them off for a championship. You had a Clemson team come in and beat them. So you don't want to speak out of turn and go ahead and just call it a year already before the, the season even gets kicked off. Uh, I say Miami shows up ready to play. I'll piggyback off of that. Um, do I think they're going to win? It's possible. Um, you don't ever want to say that, that uh, a win is totally out of question for a team like Miami uh, because in recent years their, their goal you, you is – You like Miami. Do I? Yeah. Do I really like Miami? You like Miami. I mean, come on. They're a Florida team. Respect them. Can't say that I like them. So three touchdowns, am I calling it too close, or is that too right. much for a blowout? Well, I'm let, saying they'll lose by three, and well, I call, I'm calling it close. Okay, hold on just a second. Let's, let's provide some context. Are you are you calling for Miami with the upset oh, no, by three no, touchdowns? No, the Bama. Uh, well, they're they're going to win by three touchdowns. I, I don't know. He, here's what you've got to consider. Which I think will be close for them. Well, for them, yes. Alabama's got the offense, but it's my understanding that Alabama's defense is not near what it used to be within the last couple of years. Now, it, it has it improved? Yes. But is it anywhere near the caliber that it was two years ago? No. So if Manny Diaz and his offensive staff there at Miami can find a way to exploit the mismatches against this, Al this young Alabama defense, it's a good Alabama defense, but it's young, uh, I say Miami might, might leave with the upset, maybe a touchdown, a field, uh, a touchdown wow. at most, but a field goal at, at, at the very least. Uh, but I think we both know how it's probably going to end. If I know Saban, uh, much planning, preparation has been thought into this. Uh, I, I understand that they're doing, you know, off-season workouts and stuff like that. So if I know Saban, he's going to get these boys ready to play. Do I think Miami has a chance to win? Absolutely. You always want to say any team has a chance to win, but is it going to happen? I don't know. That, that's going to be a very interesting week one matchup, you know, because Alabama's probably thinking of it as a tune-up game, whereas Miami, a very a very rebuilt and well-planned out Miami team, is probably thinking we need a challenge. I'll put them back on the map. I think it'll be close, but I think they'll lose by three touchdowns. 
That's my thought, but we'll see. And uh, Bama has the victory. Well, and, and I, I say Bama has the victory, but what I would like to see is I would like to see this, this Miami team kind of bow up and make them earn it, so to speak. Yeah. You know, if, if there's one thing I can say about Saban, um, he's tough, um, but he, I mean, they play hard, they play tough, and they play fair. So he's but not going to run it up, you don't think? Oh, he'll run it up. He he could put a he could put a fourth string in and run it up. I mean, well, let's just call that what it is. Oh, well, that's not going to be close then. We'll see. Well, no, th three touchdowns. That that's that's more than fair. I, I say Bama wins by three touchdowns. Uh, you know, but but I'd love to see a Miami team kind of bow up and give them a challenge. You hate to say it, but but this Bama team is just really good. They have a formula for success right. there in Tuscaloosa, and they stick with it, right? right? They do. So you don't want to take that away from them. The next matchup, I want to spend a little time here, Georgia versus Clemson. Uh, this one is going to be the standard setter for the Bulldogs. So what I want to say is everybody's talking about this game, and everybody's weighing in already. Everybody is expecting Clemson to win. Oh, I picked the dogs. I definitely would pick the dogs. I pick them by eight. You say eight? Yeah, eight's a tough number. I was going to say ten, but, yeah, eight's going to be hard to get, but I pick them by eight. I say two touchdowns. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just agree to disagree okay. on this. I say Georgia by two touchdowns. You're talking about a very good Georgia team, probably the best team they've had in a couple of years since that national championship drop-off in Atlanta against We're them. both saying the dogs, though. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, Clemson, on the other hand, we talked a few weeks ago, they're having offensive line problems. So I really don't see where one could say that Clemson's going to give the dogs a run for their money. Is this going to be a very good matchup? Yeah, probably. I say Clemson finds a way with a young offensive line to make Maybe hang in there, but do I say that they get the job done and beat Georgia? No, nah, I just don't see it happening. Kirby Smart, you know, he's a protege uh, of Saban. You know, come yes. up under him. Mm -hmm. um, he's a Bainbridge boy there in Georgia, and I, you know, I was I was listening on the way over here. Um, Georgia and Alabama, you know, even though they're you know ones on the SEC West, ones SEC East, very rarely do they cross over and play each other regular season. They've done it in the past, Unless, right? In the championship game, right? Not regular well, season. Well, right. so there yeah. there have been times, but it's yeah. been very rare, right? Um, you know, Alabama is the team. You know, Saban come in and they were they were coming off some rough years when Saban first got there. You know, we all remember that. Uh, Alabama was, and so was he, right? Coming out of the Dolphins, right? Right. Yeah. So you know, you've got an Alabama football team. Saban comes to town. He says, "Look." If, if these are the results you want here at the University of Alabama, you've got to buy in. Uh, I think you've got the same thing at Georgia. You've had a, a Georgia team that has been let down uh, in recent years. Uh, you know, the Mark Richt era could have been a good era. You know, they had the 2005 SEC championship, mm -hmm. which, which was a success. Uh, but then, you know, you had the, the two uh, SEC championship appearances, once against LSU, once against Bama, both times coming up short. And they had a top four appearance, right? Right. You had, yeah. a, had a top four appearance, you know, beating Oklahoma in a playoff, mm -hmm. had a national championship appearance, mm -hmm. falling to Alabama. You hate mm -hmm. to see that. And then the next year had, had an opportunity to go back and just fell short. But now you've got a guy like Kirby Smart. He, he's a Bainbridge boy. Uh, he's a Georgia alum. He finally comes to the University of Georgia, and he's getting people to slowly buy in. And one of the analysts on the way over here on, on the podcast show was talking. He said the problem with Georgia is in recent years people have not bought in. And if you want to win championships at the University of Georgia, Georgia can do it, but you've got to buy in. You've got to have players buy in. You've got to have the fans buy in. Uh, you've got to have boosters buy into the program. Um, and it shows. Kirby Smart gets there his second year. He makes a national championship appearance, wins the SEC, wins a playoff game. I mean, I'd say that's something I hang your hat on for a second-year coach, at, head coach at the University of Georgia. Yeah, now he's a defensive guy, right? He right. played D-back when he was in college playing yep. with Georgia. Yep. So um, maybe the missing link has been the offense, and so they just kind of got that up matching the power of their, their defense. Well, I don't know. I, I would beg to differ. You remember in that national championship game, the problem was, defense you know Alabama which is crazy right. because Georgia is usually right. good at defense and Kirby Smart right. was that was the defensive yeah. guy uh, you know on, on that last play of the game they bring in a very young Tua Tagovailoa uh, in at quarterback and you know we talked about it a couple of weeks ago you know you've got Devontae Smith on the outside one-on-one -on -one. you've got one safety back which was terrible you know I'm, I'm not a, a head football coach or anything like that but as I'm watching this and anybody can Monday morning you know, quarterback, so right. to speak. Anybody after the fact, hindsight's always 50-50. But when you go back and watch film, I watched that specific play. Why not just stick two safeties back? Well, the one safety that was back, 
you know, you got the corner gets beat on the outside and then the safety slips and falls, stumbles, whatever happened. He ended up losing his balance, lost his pursuit. Devontae Smith catches just it. Was gone. I'm talking about, you know, Tua just slung it in there, man. It, <laughs> it was beautiful the way that pass just kind of soared. He catches it, he runs it to the end zone, Georgia's season is over. The rest is history. Yeah, the rest is history. So I, w I would dare say that it's not offense. I would say that it's defense. I think Georgia has the ability to put games away. But like I said, the, the issue at hand is them finishing. You've got to finish. Georgia has a tendency to over-celebrate, not in the sense of being cocky, but they tend to let off the gas when they've got like a touchdown, two-touchdown lead. You know, they tend to let that kind of stuff get to their head. You can't do that against an Alabama team. Saban's always going to – if you if you slack off, you let off the gas, anything like that, and Saban can find a way to explore it, he's going to make you pay for it. Now, so that we called uh, talking about over-hyping uh, some momentum – that, that kind of lends itself to the Canes playing against Alabama. They are known for that big defensive necklace and wearing the chains. Mm -hmm. Three touchdowns, it may not even be that close, right? That was our, our first top, you know, topic of uh, Miami and, and uh, Bama. But, uh, right, Georgia, I think, will beat uh, Clemson, and if they can do so, then they can maybe show the country they're ready to finish. Clemson can finish, so it's going to be tough. They're not going to go down without a fight. Yeah. But I don't think Clemson has it now. No, nah, I don't think they have the hit factor. You know, you lost ETN at running back. You lost Trevor Lawrence to the draft at quarterback. You've lost a, a very a very experienced offensive line. So I think it's going to be a rebuilding year for Clemson the next two years. Moving on, number three, FSU versus Notre Dame. Let's talk about that one. Wow. You got McKenzie Milton coming in at the quarterback position. Um, I say if um, Norvell can, can keep this team intact, uh, get players to buy in, you know, kind of beef up that defense a little bit, get the offense going in the right direction, learn to finish games. I don't see no reason why uh, FSU doesn't beat this Notre Dame team by more than one touchdown. Amen. Amen. So I have to say, since Lou Holtz was at Notre Dame, I haven't really been a big Irish fan. Uh, so, I, I yes, I, let's pick FSU by a, just a nice round number 12. 12? <laughs> that, that'd be a solid win, wouldn't it? You're, it's going to be more like three, you're, but, you're, I mean, but maybe 12. What is with these incomplete numbers? I know. Yeah, can I get a, can it's I get hard. A, can I get a seven out of you or okay. a 14 or okay, a 21? Okay, well, a 10. We'll pick a, a seven with uh, the dogs against Clemson and uh, – a, a 10 with uh, uh, the Knowles against uh, the Irish. But you're, but you're going FSU. You're thinking oh, FSU. Oh, totally, yeah. I'm not a big Notre Dame fan since Lou Holtz left. Yeah. And, um, and FSU, they're ready. Yeah. They're hungry. The boosters are hungry. Well, they better be. They better be. That's all <laughs> I got to say. But I don't know besides you and me, I don't know who else is going to pick FSU in that game, but I think – We'll pick 10. I don't know. I think We could make some money in Vegas with 10 for sure. Whew. Don't tempt me and cash out a 401k early. <laughs> uh, moving on. We don't recommend that. No, we definitely don't recommend that. Please. What, what if there's some kids that watch this podcast and think, Dad, what's a 401k? What's Vegas? What's bets? <laughs> We're going to be looked at as the bad influences. Do not do that. Uh, moving on to the, to the last game of week one opener, Ole Miss and Louisville. That's supposed to be a standalone game, a Monday night game. I want to say that's going to be a Labor Day game there in September. Thoughts on that? Wow. So, um, if you could pick teams and put them in the SEC, I mean, A&M is a natural fit. Missouri, kind of that, you know, tough nose, you know, fighters, you know, they want to go down to the, to the last minute. Louisville could be an SEC team. You know, they, they've been known to have great offenses, but they're tough, a tough team. Um, I don't know. I think Louisville might pull that out, though. Ole Miss has some momentum. You like the, the Manning connection. Mm -hmm. But uh, I predict Louisville. By, and let's go with the round scoring numbers yeah. by three. By three? Okay, that's fair enough. Considering how Ole Miss doesn't even have the defense, you know, Lane Kiffin, head coach there at Ole Miss. Great offensive guy. Yeah, he's a great offensive guy, but the problem is Ole Miss doesn't have the defense. Louisville ACC team, Ole Miss SEC team. Ole Miss has had its recent, you know, fair share of giving even the Tide, you know, a run for their money a couple of seasons, um, but it's been very rare. Uh, I say Louisville by, you know, a field goal. Um, I don't think Ole Miss is, is, you know, with them not having the defense, I don't think it's going to pan out well for them. I think this game will probably be a shootout to the end. Uh, and it, I dare say it may come down to a last-minute field goal, maybe three seconds left on the clock, two seconds. Could be two, We could be way off in left field about these predictions. Uh, but that, that's probably where I would I would leave that one at. I, I say Louisville would, would be upset on that one. I'd say speak for yourself, man. I think I've been calling these spot on. Oh, have you? You and your <laughs> we'll find out. uneven numbers. <laughs> right. and predictions. What about the Bearcats, man? Where are they? Uh, Cincinnati, we, they don't. I don't <laughs> <laughs> they barely lost to Georgia. Are you trying to irritate me? No. But I wonder who they're playing, though. I think that would be a good game. Yeah. I'll have to Maybe look. they're playing Toledo or something. Oh, yeah. Very, very tough Navy. Game. Yeah. Navy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's something else. Hey, 
Navy, Army, Air Force, I love watching games like that. You well, know, certainly. Th those are those Triple wishbone. Hey, absolutely. Georgia Tech, you know, the, you, yeah. got, you got the wing tee offense, yeah. the flex bone offense. That's right. Those are actually some very interesting games, to be honest with you. Um, those, those are the, the top four games to pay attention to in week one. Um, experts talking about Auburn being the team to watch in the SEC. Uh, they're pegging them with one of the toughest schedules this going into the 2021 season. Uh, and in a lot of cases, they're saying that their schedule is high risk, high reward. They're lo they lost a defensive tackle. They got a guy like Bo Nix at quarterback taking snaps. Uh, I don't see how Auburn is the standard. Um, I don't even see Auburn making the SEC championship. I, I say Auburn finishes uh, maybe just over 500, but I don't see Auburn being the standard this year. So who are they playing outside the SEC? I really don't even know. I didn't even look that much into it. You know, the, a lot of this. Well, you is, were saying you know, that really up and coming team, Idaho State or something. They're oh, playing? yeah, very, very up and coming team. I don't even think it's Idaho State. And and I said this on the way over here. Like other than their SEC opponents that they have to play, which there's what eight of them. Oh, they're all winners. Yeah, though. I, but here's the deal. Like other than Alabama uh, and Georgia, because that, now that's the deep South oldest rivalry. Florida. Uh, yeah, Florida. Well, I don't even think Auburn plays Florida. I don't even think they're in the same. Mm, that's, that's I want right. to say. Auburn Auburn's SEC right. West, Florida's That's SEC right. They would East. have to pay, play a championship game. Yeah, they'd right, probably yeah. have to play a championship game. I definitely don't see – I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb here and set this in stone. I don't see any way that this Auburn team beats this Georgia team this year when they play them a regular season. Now, I do know that Georgia and Auburn play every year uh, because it's deep south oldest rivalry. Uh, Alabama-Auburn for the Iron Bowl, don't make me laugh. Alabama's going to wipe the floor with them. So uh, Auburn could have two losses. Yeah, potentially. And still be one of the best teams in the country. That's tough SEC, but, man. But do they? I mean, are they even playing other than their SEC opponents? Are they playing any top 100 schools? I mean, the, the, the I'm argument. I'm sure they're playing top 100. Well, the argument can be made, though, that they're playing cupcakes, which the, the same thing can be said about Alabama, but then Saban kind of rebuttaled that two or three years ago and said, look, if you, if you know some pretty good teams that want to play us, get them to sign. You know, get, get them to sign up and play us. Um, I don't think Auburn's going to be the team to watch in the SEC. Do they have a tough schedule? Maybe. Maybe by their standards they have a tough schedule. Uh, but it's my understanding Bo Nix is not performing well, hasn't performed well. He's, I mean, he's probably finished 57 to 60% on his passes, mm -hmm. which is decent. Uh, but they got a new coaching staff. Yeah, right? they got a new coaching staff. You know, they got rid of uh, his name escapes me, Gus Gus Malzahn. They got rid of him. Where did he, did he get picked up anywhere? Or is he UCF. Just... Okay. Yeah, I want yeah. I want to wow. say he comes to, to Central Florida. Wow. I think that'll be a solid fit. National champs UCF. I well, Associated Press. Yeah, yeah, Associated Press. Malzahn is the kind of guy that if you want to get eight, nine, maybe even ten wins, bring him. You know, you figure his first year there, that Auburn team made it all the way to the national championship against Florida State, just couldn't pull it out. Ever since then, Auburn's been trying to get back there. Uh, you know, before Malzahn, you had, uh, what was his name, Gene Chizik. Mm. Gene Chizik comes in, you had Cam Newton and Went some undefeated. of those guys. Yeah, and won a national championship. But now, you know, you don't want to peg all that on Malzahn. The problem was, you know, that Florida State team that year was really good and they knew how to finish ball games. That Florida State team in 2013, was that though, they were a second-half team if we're just being honest. So UCF, um, with him there, he could probably uh, be a top 10 team every year. Because top, the strength I, I, of schedule, if they go undefeated every year? Well, I would say that's fair. Are I, they in the American Conference Yeah, I, I want to say UCF's in the American, yeah. yeah. So that'd be pretty solid. Um, and lastly, experts are claiming Florida's going to be the next contender for a title. Don't know how to feel about wow. that. Wow. The Gators wow. being a contender for the title, you know, you figure their Heisman Trophy winner benched after the first quarter, first or second quarter uh, of a bowl game. Heisman against, Trophy contender. Yeah, Heisman Trophy yeah. contender. Yeah. You know, he's benched after the second quarter. I want to say it was the first or second quarter. I know it was the first half he got benched right. uh, in a bowl game against Oklahoma, which they got blew out 55-20. Yeah. to 20. Um, So you're, you're talking about a matter of what was it? Was that like 30 points, 30-something 30, 30 points? A lot. Um, you know, and they had a pretty good team then. They lost tight end Kyle Pitts. They've lost Trask. You know, he's down at the Bucks now. Mm -hmm. um, but th they're claiming uh, – He's uh, going to be just fine. Brady's going to help yeah, him out. Yeah, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine there. But That's as far right. as the Gators – Drop it off short. Yeah, Everyone's but it's covered. Right. As far as the Gators are concerned moving forward, I, I mean, I haven't really paid that much attention to them, but how can you make the argument that they're going to be a contender when you see what they had last season and you see how they kind of fell off? They did. They, they had a good run last year. Yeah, they, they, had a, they were there. Yeah, they, they had a good run, but, yeah. you know, they've lost a few. Yeah. You know, it yeah. always happens. Yeah. You know, you reach your peak, and then if you don't make it, you know, either a bunch of them are going to stay, which is very rare, uh, or they're, you know, declaring early. A lot of them junior year are declaring to go on to the NFL draft and kind of make their mark. In a lot of leagues. money waiting for them. Right. So, speaking of Florida, what about that Florida-Jacksonville connection? Oh, the Florida-Florida-Jacksonville connection? Yeah, let's end, let's end this with this one. Tebow signing at the tight end position, you know, taking some snaps there. 
Uh, he's getting a lot of flack, man, uh, for coming back in a different position as a QB. Here's my thing. I don't understand. You've been following some press, though. Is it yeah. positive press? Uh, it's negative. Negative. Yeah, there, there's a lot of people saying, you know, he should have just stayed out of the league. You know, he's kind of washed mm. up. He's in his 30s. Uh, but here's what Still where, an right. athlete, though. Well, he's an athlete, but here's what I'll rebuttal. He came and tried out, and the coaches obviously saw something in him. Uh, according to Urban Meyer, he said that his assistant coaches watched his workout and said, hey, he's, he's actually doing really well for his age. He's doing real good in his workouts. They told him at first what he needed to improve on. There was a few minor things he needed to improve on. He goes, works on them, comes back for another workout, and Meyer's uh, assistant coaches say, hey, man, this guy's good. So they sign him. I mean, he's good for any age, really. Right. Well, he's, he's like 33, 34, yeah. and a lot of people are saying that's the age that tight ends are kind of washed up. Well, Brady's like 54, though, right? Well, yeah, but now we're kind of comparing apples to oranges, though. Brady's probably, right at quarterback. You're, yeah. you're talking, yeah, <laughs> you're, right. you're talking about a guy that played QB in the league, right? Someone yeah. who has to earn it in the trenches is right. much different, right? Yeah. yeah, you're talking about a guy yeah. that that played QB a few short seasons in the league. You know, he went from the Broncos to the Jets. Uh, you know, he he had a, a run with the Eagles a little bit. Uh, he hadn't taken a snap in about six years. Hadn't played in the league in about what five. Yeah. Five, six years, something like that. Now he's coming back in a different position. He's getting a lot of flack, but I seem to remember a Michael Vick, you know, when, you know, mm-hmm. all the, the stuff that happened with him, he, he got out of prison and everything. He come back into the league, uh, signed with the Eagles. And, it, you know, I remember a lot of games in the second half where he was carrying them. That's right. You so know, if Tebow makes the team as a backup tight end, a special teamer, you know, kind of a third string quarterback. Oh, let me stop you there. He, he's going to make the team. They're, go, they're going to sell tickets. Oh, definitely going to. It could be a business move, and it's great. I mean, you bring in some, some, uh, you know, the younger generation have someone mentor them. I mean, it's right. a win-win. Well, here's what I want to say, and I don't want anybody to misunderstand me at all. I Tebow is a great guy, very good role model. I, I will go out on a limb and, and definitely say that. Very good role model, very great person. Like him, uh, even as a football player, he's a he can be a he's really a good football player. Now yeah. he hasn't played in a while, but I still say for the shape he's in, he'll probably produce. I mean, he's a hard worker, uh, he's competitive. I'm concerned that Meyer made this move um, with the understanding of if something happens to Lawrence. Now, I'm, I'm totally just, just predicting this, but I think Meyer made this move. So if something happens to Trevor Lawrence, he can say, okay, Tebow, we're, we're going to kind of start rotating you in at quarterback and give you some snaps. So it's really a win-win for the Jags because if something happens to their, their rookie that they put all their chips in on, you've got a guy like Tebow. And, and you're not leading with them because no. the haters come out when you're leading with them. Right, the haters always come out when you're leading with them. But here's the deal. When Tebow played with the Broncos, I remember a playoff game where he threw – In 80, Pittsburgh. Yeah, he, he throws, what, an 88-yard touchdown pass um, to Demarius Thomas to finish off the game. Yeah. Statistically, when Tebow was QB, you know, the last five minutes of the game, Tebow was the guy that you wanted to take snaps yeah. under center. And he'll move the chains. Yeah, he'll definitely move the chains. I say as tight end, he's a very good blocking tight end. Three or four yards if you need it, Tebow's going to be the guy. Uh, but I also say Meyer made this move, number one, because – they have a connection, University of Florida, two national championships. Tebow was a part of that process. Heisman. Yeah, definitely a Heisman winner. Um, but I also say that if something happens to Trevor Lawrence, Meyer is thinking, okay, we keep Tebow on. And I'll even, go, I'll even do you one further. I say Tebow doesn't get as many snaps at tight end so that he can be preserved just in case that happens. You may see him on one offensive series or two, but it'll kind of be spaced out. It right. won't be every single offensive right. series. I still say Meyer is saving Tebow in the event that something happens to Trevor Lawrence, and anything could happen, you know, whether it be a knee injury, uh, something happen with your shoulder, you just never know what's going to happen in the league. I say Meyer makes this move. He's keeping Tebow on ice, and I say that the door could be open for a Tebow return to Jacksonville as a QB. Right now, he come in as a tight end. I say the tight end is the cloak. I say if, if all bets are off, he takes off that cloak, you're looking at Jacksonville's next QB should Lawrence go down. And the great favor he's going to build with just the whole Jacksonville, you know, Orlando corridor, Gainesville corridor, they're going to sell tickets. It's going to be great mentoring. It is a huge win, even with him on ice, as you said, you know, just kind of waiting uh, to see what happens. I'm not hating so. on the guy. I'm just, I'm just telling that's, you what I think. The, guy, the guy's played at QB. He's yep. in great shape to be in his early 30s. He's very it's a business he, move. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely a business move because Jacksonville is notorious for having QBs go down the drain. Tampa Bay was, was that at one point. Tampa Bay had the reputation for a long time, you know, QBs go there to die, so to speak. So we'll, 
I say that Meyer is keeping Tebow on ice for a potential return as QB. Now, how the locker room is going to handle that, I don't I don't think that's going to go over well. Yep. So something for us to kind of keep an eye on, and, and we'll see how it plays out. This coming football season is going to be exciting. Yes. Both the collegiate and the pros. Yes, a lot of the COVID restrictions being lifted across yes. the nation. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see a lot of stadiums get filled back up and uh, see, see some college football again. All right, Rod, nice yep. job, man. Yep.